the world watched in shock as news emerged from Lebanon. The gravity of the situation was immediately apparent, as the initial reports painted a grim picture. A series of explosions had rocked the nation, targeting members of the militant group Hezbollah. The devastation was widespread, with buildings reduced to rubble and the air thick with smoke and dust. The blasts, attributed to tampered pagers, instantly raised alarms about the group's usually tight security. These pagers, once a symbol of communication, had been turned into instruments of destruction. The attacks left many dead or wounded, sending shockwaves through Lebanon and beyond. The scenes of chaos and despair were heart-wrenching, as families searched for their loved ones amidst the debris. The use of such a simple device, the pager, seemed almost archaic in our modern world. Yet, it was this very simplicity that made the attack so insidious. Yet, this simplicity masked a deadly intent. The pagers, once a lifeline for communication, had been transformed into deadly weapons. The pagers, rigged to explode, exposed a chilling vulnerability within Hezbollah's ranks. This breach in security was not just a tactical failure, but a psychological blow to the group. The Lebanese government immediately condemned the attacks. The swift condemnation was a clear message that such acts of violence would not be tolerated. The attack served as a stark reminder of the constant threat of violence in the region. The fragile peace was shattered, and the specter of further conflict loomed large. Emergency responders rushed to the scenes, working tirelessly to aid the injured and restore order. Their bravery and dedication were a beacon of hope amidst the chaos. The attacks left the nation reeling, grappling with the human cost and the implications for its already fragile stability. The mourning was palpable, as communities came together to support one another. The explosions also sent ripples of concern throughout the international community. The global response was swift, with leaders and organizations expressing their solidarity with Lebanon. Governments and organizations condemned the violence, urging restraint and calling for a thorough investigation. The calls for justice were loud and clear, as the world watched closely. The attacks underscored the volatile nature of the region and the ever-present potential for conflict. The need for peace and stability was more urgent than ever, as the world hoped for a resolution to the ongoing strife. The attacks unfolded with chilling precision. Hezbollah members, accustomed to the routine beeps of their pagers, received a fatal surprise. The devices, rigged with explosives, detonated without warning, causing death and injury. The attacks exposed a terrifying new tactic, turning everyday technology into instruments of terror. The use of pagers, rather than more sophisticated communication methods, initially puzzled many observers. However, this seemingly outdated technology proved to be a critical weakness for Hezbollah. The group's reliance on pagers, perhaps for their perceived security, backfired spectacularly. The attacks demonstrated a high level of planning and coordination. The perpetrators clearly understood Hezbollah's communication protocols, successfully exploiting their reliance on pagers. The attacks were not random acts of violence, but calculated strikes aimed at specific individuals within the organization. The targeting of Hezbollah members, rather than civilian targets, suggested a specific motive behind the attacks. The perpetrators seemed intent on weakening the organization, striking at its core by eliminating key individuals. The attacks raised questions about the perpetrators' identities and their ultimate objectives. In an age of smartphones and encrypted messaging, the use of pagers by Hezbollah seemed like a relic of the past. These devices, once ubiquitous in the 1980s and 1990s, have largely been replaced by more advanced technology. Yet, Hezbollah's choice to stick with pagers raises intriguing questions about their strategy and priorities. Why would a sophisticated organization rely on such outdated technology, especially for sensitive communications? In a world where instant messaging apps and encrypted emails are the norm, the decision to use pagers appears counterintuitive. The answer, ironically, lies in the group's quest for security. Modern communication methods, while convenient, come with their own set of vulnerabilities. Encryption can be broken, and digital footprints can be traced. Hezbollah, operating in a hostile environment, has long been wary of more modern communication methods. The constant threat of surveillance and interception by adversaries like Israeli intelligence has made them cautious. They viewed these technologies, often reliant on foreign companies and susceptible to interception, as potential security risks. The fear of compromised communications led them to seek alternatives that seemed less penetrable. 
Pagers, with their limited range and simple functionality, offered a perceived layer of protection. Unlike smartphones, pagers do not store data or connect to the internet, reducing the risk of hacking. The pagers, operating on a separate network, were considered less vulnerable to eavesdropping by Israeli intelligence. This separate network was seen as a fortress, impenetrable by modern hacking techniques. The group likely believed that these simple devices provided a more secure means of communication, shielding their conversations from prying eyes. The analog nature of pagers made them seem like a safer bet in a digital world. However, this reliance on outdated technology proved to be a fatal miscalculation. The attackers exploited Hezbollah's perception of security, turning their trusted communication tool into a weapon against them. The attackers found ways to intercept and manipulate pager messages, exposing the vulnerabilities of what was thought to be a secure system. This breach highlighted the risks of underestimating the capabilities of adversaries. The attacks highlighted the dangers of complacency and the ever-evolving nature of security threats. In the end, the very tool that was supposed to protect them became their Achilles heel, a stark reminder that in the realm of security, there are no absolutes. Section 4. The accusatory finger points to Israel. In the aftermath of the attacks, accusations flew. Hezbollah, reeling from the assault, wasted no time in pointing the finger at Israel. The group, long locked in a bitter conflict with the Jewish state, saw the attacks as a clear act of aggression. Hezbollah officials accused Israel of orchestrating the pager bomb attacks, citing their sophistication and the targeting of key personnel. They claimed that Israel, seeking to weaken the organization, had resorted to cowardly tactics, striking at the heart of their communication network. Israel, for its part, remained characteristically tight-lipped. The government, while not claiming responsibility for the attacks, made no effort to deny their involvement either. This calculated ambiguity, a hallmark of Israeli foreign policy, left the world to draw its own conclusions. The accusations and counter-accusations highlighted the deep mistrust and animosity that defined the relationship between Hezbollah and Israel. The attacks, regardless of who was ultimately responsible, threatened to further escalate tensions in the region. Section 5. The World Reacts. A Chorus of Condemnation. The international community reacted with a mixture of condemnation and concern to the pager bomb attacks in Lebanon. Governments and organizations around the world expressed their outrage at the violence, calling for restraint and a de-escalation of tensions. The United Nations condemned the attacks as a heinous act of terrorism and urged all parties to exercise restraint. The United States, while acknowledging Israel's right to self-defense, expressed concern over the potential for further violence. The European Union called for a thorough investigation into the attacks and urged all sides to avoid actions that could destabilize the region. The Arab League also condemned the violence, emphasizing the need for dialogue and a peaceful resolution to the conflict. The international response highlighted the global concern over the escalating violence in the Middle East. The attacks, seen as a dangerous precedent, threatened to ignite a wider conflict, with potentially devastating consequences for the entire region. Section 6. A Future on Edge Retaliation or Restraint the pager bomb attacks in Lebanon left a trail of unanswered questions and a region teetering on the brink. The devastation was palpable, with buildings reduced to rubble and lives shattered in an instant. Emergency responders worked tirelessly, but the scars of the attack ran deep. The attacks, a stark reminder of the fragility of peace, raised fears of retaliation and a spiral of violence. The streets were filled with protesters calling for peace, their faces etched with worry and despair. The tension was almost tangible, as the community grappled with the aftermath. Hezbollah, vowing revenge for the deaths of its members, seemed poised to strike back. The group's leaders delivered fiery speeches, promising retribution and rallying their supporters. The air was thick with anticipation, as everyone waited to see what their next move would be. The group, known for its military prowess and willingness to engage in asymmetric warfare, had numerous options at its disposal. From guerrilla tactics to sophisticated weaponry, Hezbollah's arsenal was vast and varied. Their training camps buzzed with activity as fighters prepared for the possibility of conflict. Israel, bracing for a potential counterattack, remained on high alert. Soldiers patrolled the borders, their eyes scanning for any signs of threat. The tension was palpable as the nation prepared for the worst. 
The nation, with its sophisticated military and intelligence apparatus, was prepared to respond forcefully to any aggression. In command centers, strategists mapped out potential responses, while fighter jets stood ready on the tarmac, engines humming with anticipation. The specter of a wider conflict loomed large, threatening to engulf the entire region in flames. The possibility of escalation was ever-present, with each side ready to unleash their full might. The fear of a full-scale war hung heavy in the air. The international community, recognizing the high stakes, urged both sides to exercise restraint and seek a peaceful resolution to the crisis. Diplomatic channels buzzed with activity as world leaders worked tirelessly to prevent further bloodshed. The stakes were incredibly high and the pressure to find a solution was immense. The path forward remained uncertain, a delicate balancing act between retaliation and restraint. Negotiators met behind closed doors, their discussions fraught with tension. Every handshake, every word carried the weight of the region's future. The choices made in the coming days and weeks would determine the fate of the region, leading either to further bloodshed or a fragile and uncertain peace. The streets, divided between scenes of war and hopes for peace, stood as a testament to the region's turbulent history and uncertain future. The world watched with bated breath, hoping for a resolution that would bring lasting